We're happy to welcome Kate Wicker via Skype with us right now, um, all the way from Georgia. Kate, how are you doing? I'm doing well, and I'm having a getting past perfect moment. My dog is barking <laughs> like crazy, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. We That's can, all right. It makes it more real. Yeah, and we can't hear the dog, so we're fine. Hey, listen, moms in particular seem to, to feel a need to have control and, and everything picture perfect. Uh, your book actually offers real-life solutions that, you know, it's not always going to be perfect. What is the key ingredient to focusing on familial love? Well, I, I think that... One of the things that I struggled with as a mom when I first became a mom is I, I wanted to, I, I looked at that scripture, perfect love casts out all fear. And I thought that I had to be perfect and that I had to give perfect love. Where instead it has to be that you look to God as the source of perfect love. And you look at the Holy Trinity and how that can be a reflection of the family and how we can have these relationships. And we're, we're not going to achieve that Trinity kind of love here on earth. It's just not going to happen. And I think once I accepted that, it actually was very freeing for me because I've been trying so hard to, uh, even as a little mom, not letting my baby cry ever because I thought if she cried, oh my gosh, that meant I was a horrible mom. And I know I was a little more OCD than probably some of your viewers are today, <laughs> but I think that all moms and parents in general, we, we love, especially in the Catholic circles, we love our children so much. The family is so important that we can put this crazy amount of pressure on us. And then add to it now social media where mm -hmm. you can look on Instagram or Pinterest or, or uh, Facebook and see an update of a mom doing these amazing crafts. I've shared this with several um, moms and during speaking events, but I had this one mom come up to me and she said, I'm never doing the Jesse tree again because it just caused stress. And, and I thought, you know what? My parents didn't do the Jesse tree with me during Advent season. And somehow I learned about Christ's genealogy and, and I, know, I know and love Jesus. So I think we can go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, you know, I have to tell you, we're, we're all delighted to see Rachel Balducci, uh, one of the co-hosts on the gist on catholic tv uh yeah. she wrote the the forward to the book getting past perfect what's it like to connect with them um, with other catholic moms and authors around the country uh, that is just such a blessing and that's where the internet can be used as a great tool because we can connect with these moms and support each other but i think we have to be careful to be a sorority of mothers and, and build unity, not disparity, because even in these Catholic circles, it's easy to compare yourself and to start either feeling holier than thou, well, at least I'm not that kind of mom, or to start really feeling these chronic twinges of inadequacy. Now, Rachel, what's really cool is we have the same alma mater. We both are UGA journalism majors, go talk, <laughs> and we don't live too far from each other, and yet we always end up meeting in Boston or, or somewhere else. So I'm actually gonna be, um, filming next week with them, uh, the Jets. Just so, uh, yeah, so Rachel is great. And I, I feel like having those veteran moms who've gone before me and say, you know, oh gosh, now I'm struggling with this season of motherhood. And then they can look at me and say, this too shall pass. And I can tell the new moms out there, I have a baby boy now and I have a, what we call a teenager because she's almost 13. <laughs> and I am so much wiser with this baby, my fifth child, because I know these, yes, I'm tired, but it's fleeting and it's gonna pass. And I see how old my Madeline is and how she's just, you know, doing her own thing. And so it, it's wonderful to have those veteran moms who've been there who can give you a pat on the shoulder and say, you're gonna get through this. Even you've got this, even when you think you don't. If you if you had if you had to give any advice to a mom out there now who is who is struggling with this, you know, with doubt, negative feelings, what would you say to them? Number one, you're not alone. It's mm. really easy to start to think that you're the only one who struggles. You're the only one who have children who drive you crazy. You're not. I was just recently locking myself in the bathroom because my husband worked all weekend and was on the brink of a breakdown because <laughs> my children were driving me crazy so you're not the only one and when they do drive you crazy that doesn't mean you're a bad mom or you don't love your children number two open yourself to grace it's there and i think sometimes we can get so caught up in taking care of our children and the day-to-day -day tasks that we forget to just say 
Jesus, I need you right now. Help me. You know, our Catholic faith is about having a relationship. And we've got to cultivate that relationship every single day. And I don't do a very good job. Sometimes I get so busy and I'm cooking dinner and I'm multi, moms are awesome at multitasking, but then we forget to pray in all that multitasking. And just to pause and open yourself up to grace because it sounds so trite, but every time I do it, it's there. And it helps me get through those crazy moments instead of just losing it. And if you're really struggling, ask for help. Um, I have suffered from clinical anxiety and depression and tried too hard to fix it on my own. And I finally had to ask for help. And my husband and a few key loved ones really helped me. And so don't, don't think that it makes you a bad Catholic because you're struggling. There are certain things that you can't fix on your own, even, even if you pray every day. There are, there, the Holy Spirit needs to guide you uh, to seek that counsel, whether it's talking to a priest, whether it's talking to a counselor or a doctor or a good friend. Don't be afraid to ask for help and to lean on Simon. To, you know, Jesus cried out <laughs> and asked for help. And Simon had to help carry the cross, and Veronica helped wipe his face during the Passion. So if you're in a Passion, don't be afraid to cry out. Thank you for your honesty, uh, your humor, your practical wisdom, Kate, uh, to all of us. It's a great book. How can viewers stay in touch with your work and also get a copy of Getting Past Perfect? Sure. Uh, the, the book is a Catholic mom book, so it's via, um, you can get it via um, Amazon.com or Ave Maria Press. Um, you can also buy one from my website. My website's real easy, katewicker.com. Wicker, like the furniture, I always say. Um, and uh, it's, it's easy to find me. I'm, I'm posting silly pictures on Instagram all the time, and I really do try and keep it real to share the blessed moments and the tough moments. Mm -hmm. Well, Kate, thanks so much for being with us. We look forward to seeing you next week. Yeah, thank you. I'm excited. It'll be fun. It always is when the gist is around. Hey, have a great day and keep up the great you, work. You too. God bless. Thanks Bye. for having me. Bye. You too.